Hey, what's up everybody? So before we get too far into this vlog, I did want to mention the California wildfires. California is literally on fire. 200,000 people have been forced to evacuate their homes and the fire that was burning just two hours north of me consumed over 4,000 acres. Firefighters are literally working around the clock to help contain these fires, but thousands of people have already lost everything. Both both in Northern and Southern California. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some links down in the description, including a PayPal. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some links down in the description to where you, if you feel the desire, you can help donate money to the state of California and maybe help some of these families uh, recover some of the things that they have lost, you know, right before Christmas. It's a heartbreaking situation and I wanna do everything that we can do to help these families families that, you know, lost everything. And also help the firefighters that are fighting these giant out of control fires in California. It's definitely worse than what you see on the news. When that fire was burning just two hours north of us, it's all anyone was talking about. It's a huge concern to the people of California. So if anybody feels like they'd like to help out the state of California and the families that have been displaced by these wildfires, then use the links down in the description below, including a campaign from Jennifer Berger Coleman to help those affected in Northern California. This is statewide. Northern California, Southern California, lots of things are on fire and lots of families are being affected. So give anything that you can give. Everything, literally everything helps out. Thank you so much for listening to this public service announcement. And now on to the vlog. <laughs> All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, you guys, which means that it is vlog day. And yeah, I've got a great vlog planned out for you guys this week. It's going to be a full vlog. We got all of the segments. I'm going to do that thing where I put all of the segments right here with their timestamps so you can see what's coming up. But we got some retro vaping. We got getting to know Grim Green. We got, you know, favorite comments of the week. I got a whole bunch of vape mail to open. We got some news and advocacy as well. So welcome. Welcome to the vlog. And the first thing I want to do is sincerely truly and honestly sincerely thank you guys for dealing with all of my video fiddling that I've been doing eh, over the last like two months or so <laughs> Okay, slight sidetrack. Uh, my buddy Mark Moots just texted me and said, the new Morbid Angel. What is it? What did he say? The new Morbid Angel. Get to know it. Holy fucking shit. Well, there you go. We're all going to listen to the new Morbid Angel. Anyway, yes, thank you for dealing with all of my fiddling and stuff. I like to, you know, move stuff around. The last few months have just been really like, I wanted to test out every possible camera angle that kind of exists in my office and in my house. And I think now I finally have it nailed down to what I want to do, where it's comfortable to shoot, where I can do it, where there's good light, this, that, and the other. So thank you so much for dealing with all of that nonsense. The vlog should be a lot more uh, regular, I guess, and consistent now. I just like, you know, I like being a little bit more adventurous. I hate the idea of just setting up in my office and having one static camera angle and shooting all of my video from this one static camera angle. And I'm not like necessarily, you know, coming down on anybody else or any other YouTubers that do that. Just for me, I don't find it as fun. It's not as fun for me to do that. I I'm a creative person. And I like to be creative, so things get moved around, but this is it. Welcome. Welcome to the final, final product. Finally! And before we get too far into this vlog, I want to do that thing where I hear from one of my subscribers, and this isn't necessarily like a shout out or a question. It was just a video that a fellow named Andrew had posted in the Namber Juice group, and I just thought it was so entertaining that I asked him to email it to me. So let's see what Andrew's up to. Kids. I have no desire to have kids. I have no 
Yeah, <laughs> he's just kind of hanging out. He watches the vlog with his family. And I just thought it was really funny that he was there, uh, you know, with his child. And his child was watching me on YouTube talking about not wanting to have kids. But I think that's fantastic. I, I like seeing people watch the vlog. And I especially just really like that shot. Like the vlog and the TV and the family and the kid. And that just, that just really warmed my heart. And I wanted to share that with people. I do actually want to hear from one of my subscribers though right now and this isn't uh, a video this is an email I got that actually kind of let, let's just read it this actually comes from a different Andrew but he sent me an email that says Nick first off uh, feel free to use anything in this email if you decide to read it on your vlog I am writing this with a heavy heart this Sunday morning I lost my granny to lung cancer she was a smoker for about 55 years and it finally caught up with her I obviously knew that smoking was bad and would cause all of this which is why I have been vaping for for about three years, but to actually watch her dwindle away, seeing the effects of cancer is horrible, and I do not wish that on anyone. I wish people could understand the benefits of vaping over smoking. No one should ever have to experience what she did. Anyway, I was wondering if I could have a shout out in memory of her. Her name was Mary, and she was the most amazing woman I've ever met. Thank you for all you do, Grim. You don't realize all of the good that you do for people. I wish you the best. P.S. I make it to the end of your vlogs. I want my hug. Let's keep on vaping. Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. That's a, you know, that's a, that's a horrible thing. That's a, that's a heartbreaking experience. Experience. So yes, absolutely, absolutely, we will shout out your granny. Mary, Mary, this shout out is for you. May you rest in peace. And Andrew, thank you so much for the kind words. I am so sorry for your loss. And you are absolutely right. Smoking is awful. Smoking will kill you. I hate, hate, hate that in the United States that people are are trying to get other people to not vape and smoke instead. We're constantly talking about, oh, trying to reduce the smoke, reduce the harm. We're trying to eradicate smoking. We're trying to not, you know, not have people smoke cigarettes. And then when we have this amazingly unbelievable viable alternative, the government turns on us. State and local governments turn on us. Healthcare officials turn on us. For some reason, it's perfectly okay in society now to shame smokers, to have this very quit or die mentality, and I can't stand that. So yes, your Granny Mary is definitely shouted out, along with a huge shout out to anyone, anyone that has stopped smoking and started vaping. Welcome to the club. It tastes and smells a lot better over here. So moving forward from that, thank you so much, Andrew, for writing in. And if anybody else has any other shout outs or things they would like to see here at the beginning of this vlog, you can send them on over to nickgrimgreen.com. I love getting videos. Most everybody has a smartphone these days. So get on video, shoot me a quick video, give a shout out, tell a story, do a thing, just send it on over nickgrimgreen.com and it could get included in this here vlog. But what I wanna do right now is uh, I just wanna talk about real quick uh, what I've been vaping. And I, I tend to have a lot of stuff set up for what I've been vaping. And in my what I've been vaping, I always include the stuff that I'm kind of, you know, vaping to evaluate it for a review. Things like this, things like the G-Box from Geek Vape. It's their big old dual 18650 squonker. It's topped with the Radar RDA. I've been vaping this. I've been evaluating it. I've been having a fairly good time with it. I don't want to spoil the possible future review. So I'm I'm not going to say too much, but it's the G-Box Squonker. I have been vaping it. This is loaded up with uh, the acid. It's loaded up with Ponyon Acid from Smacks. It's a delicious vape. And this mod isn't without its quirks, but overall, overall, I have really been enjoying it. As well as things like that Intrepid from Blitz Enterprises, their newest RTA. I've got it sitting on top of that, uh, you know, the Vupu Alpha guy, which hasn't got a review. Maybe this will get a review very soon. I've been spending a lot of time with this setup. This is loaded up with uh, Savage E-Liquid Banana Waffle 
uh, it's, it's something. It's It has a confusing name. It's waffle cone banana ice cream, I believe. And in the interest of being very open and honest with all of my subscribers, yeah, Savage E-Liquid is a sponsor of the podcast. They pay us money to advertise on the podcast. I just really want everyone to know that before I talk about how good this liquid is. And it's good. It's a fine liquid. I get a lot of upfront banana. We talked about this on the podcast already, but it's delicious. It's ice cream it's banana-y, it's a little bit waffle cone -y. I would actually love a lot more waffle cone in this. I would like a less weird tasting vanilla. The vanilla in this is, is a little bit weird as far as ice cream goes. But it's still a great vape and it tastes good in this Blitz Enterprises Intrepid. Yeah, good stuff, man. Also still rocking that Sense V-Jet kit. And again, I say this every week, I think. The mod, the mod is fine. It's not anything special. It's not anything spectacular. It's just a dual 18650 mod. Happens to be really comfortable, but the real shining star of this whole setup is these Sense coil heads. This is loaded up with normal view from the Grim Green Signature line. Very delicious juice, very Christmas timey juice. And I love the vape I get from these coil heads. It's so good. It's, it's, it's good. You know, one of the things that I rank a coil head on is I vape differently, I've realized, from a sub-ohm tank than I do with like a dripper. When I vape from a dripper, I know the limitations of cotton and coil heads. I know how long I can take a drag for, I know how hot I can run it, and I tend to actually take shorter drags with RDAs than I do with anything else. And I only really recently noticed this when using like a lot of sub-ohm tanks. I've been using a few sub-ohm tanks and it really started with that that damn UL Valerian. I was not expecting that sub-ohm tank to be as good as it was, and it is still a stellar sub-ohm tank, and I just used it a whole bunch, and it kind of changed my point of view a little bit. I went, wow, maybe sub-ohm tanks, you know, they're great, and I like vaping on them, but I've never considered them to be like a staple, like something I would actively continue to vape and continue to use and continue to fill up, because I'm a dripper guy. I like drippers. I like building coils. I like installing coils. I like being able to rewick. I like drippers. And I've noticed that the way that I vape on this sub ohm tank is I take longer drags. I take longer, longer drags. And I love being able to take a really deep drag on this, on this particular coil head, and not worry about it. Uh, running dry or anything like that. It stays throughout my really long drag, a very nice, like flavorful, saturated vape. Uh, it's, it's just a wonderful thing when you can do that. And I've really been enjoying this, uh, this sense V jet coil head, the kits, the kits fine, but the coil head, Oh, the coil head. Oh, rocking that Michelle Lynn Curaid Band-Aid tin. I grabbed this out the other day because I was getting really frustrated with my single 18650 mech mod. And don't get me wrong, I still absolutely really very much love single 18650 mech mods, but the build I had on it was just a little bit too high. It wasn't as warm as I wanted. It was still, it was good, it was a good vape. It just wasn't as warm as I wanted. So I thought, damn, I'm gonna put this Rebel. It was a I built it on a recoil rebel. I said, I'm gonna put this rebel on something that's like dual parallel, unregulated. And I looked over and the first thing I saw was my Michelle Lynn Curate antique tin box. And I thought, yeah, I'm definitely putting the Rebel on there. And it's been an awesome vape on this. Uh, I've got it loaded up with Turkish Maze, which is, yeah, God, I love it. I talk about it every week because I really like this juice. And I realize that juice is a very, in I mean, very subjective thing to different people. So don't take what I say about juice as like Bible truth, you know? It is all uh, a very subjective thing. It's just my opinion. And, and I happen to really love this Turkish maize juice. And it is delicious in this. This is a very simple build. This is basically a ruby build in here. I did a seven wrap or an eight wrap, 22 
gauge anarchist nye chrome wire build in here just a round wire build around a three millimeter it came out right at around 0.19 and on a single 18650 mech it's a nice vape it's a little bit cooler but on a dual parallel it's a little bit warmer and i get just that little bit extra of of greatness out of it I guess I do actually take pretty long drags on RDAs too. I think taking long drags is one of the things I really enjoy about vaping. And I'm just discovering this now after vaping for eight years. And now it's time to do a battery check on the Asmodus mouth to lung wake tank. I was bragging a few weeks ago that on a dual 18650 mod, if you're vaping like a 1.5 ohm coil, the battery life is gonna last you a really long time. <coughs> <sighs> It's no big deal, everybody sneezes. So how I decided to measure this was, I'm measuring this by how many times I fill up the tank. This is something that I don't vape all day long, constantly, every day, all day long, so I didn't have a really good way to measure the battery life. So I, go, I thought I would go by how many times I filled up the tank. I filled up this tank six times now, mouth to lung only. This is a 1.5 ohm coil and I go through juice very, very slowly. But this is the sixth time I've loaded it up. It's still a great vape. I get that delicious mouth to lung throat hit. 50-50 PGVG, just 18 milligram Glacier Banana. No salt nicks in here, so I don't cough. And I love it. It's a lovely vape, so let's take a look at the battery life. Here's where we're at. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's literally all I've gone through in six tankfuls. That's how full the batteries are on this mod still. And I honestly think that's kind of amazing. I haven't swapped out these batteries in two weeks. Keeping in mind, it's not something I vape all day long every day, but these batteries have lasted me two weeks so far and six tankfuls of juice. I, I'm just gonna keep this going. I am dying to know how many wake tanks full of juice I can get out of these dual 18650 batteries before they completely completely just go completely dead on me and i know not completely dead i don't run my batteries completely completely dead but i just really want to see how long these batteries will last good Oh, that's good. And I'm actually still using what I opened last week in the vlog, that Eggman Mods, the dual series Stabwood 18650 guy. I've got it topped with that rainbowy reload RDA, and I'm still vaping the SMC out of it. The juice that I thought was salt nick monkey cream turns out to be strawberry monkey cream, and it is... Uh, it is just delicious juice. I am really into this juice, and it is a very simple juice. To me, it tastes like a simple juice. It's like butterscotch, bakery, and strawberry, and it's great. All those flavors together, it it it's it's good. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know why I was doing this hand motion. That's like feed me. I need more food. But this juice is good. I just put some very freshly charged Sony VTC fives in here on an unregulated series. So I'm expecting this to hit like the mother of all dump trucks. And 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 I don't even know what that means. That's how hard I expect this to hit. Crazy. That's crazy. It's a good vape. I love this vape. It's nice and hot. I always seem to have a wide variety of vapes. I always have something set up that's really like a clouds bro clouds hot cloud chasing setup. I've got little squonkers set up. I've got mouth to lung set up. I've got parallel stuff set up. I like a wide variety of vapes. And there is a lot of what I've been vaping this week, and I'm not even sure how I'm going to explain this, but I'm still vaping that Asmodus Luna Squonker. I love this mod. I stand by everything I said in that video. It's a fantastic mod. One thing I didn't mention in that video that I really should have, and I was watching it back, and I'm like, why didn't I say this? This Asmodus Luna Squonker is regulated to 80 watts. 80 watts is the maximum wattage that you're going to get out of this. Just thought I would include that information because it wasn't included in the review. I've been loving it. It's actually topped right now with an original recipe uh, recoil that Michelle Lynn, who made my Curate T, 
tin antique dual parallel box. I traded her decks. I sent her a recoil deck and she sent me a recoil deck that she modded to have a squonk pin in it. And here's all I'm gonna say about that is right now, I am the only one besides her with a recoil original recipe squonker and it is awesome on top of this mod. So let the speculating begin. But it's awesome, I've got this loaded up with Yig, I've got a DHD metal head uh, and a drip tip on there as well, loving it. This is, this is probably out of everything on my desk, currently my most loved setup. Good. It's just so good. Anyway, lastly, 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 this is the Cartel Revenant, the one I traded Matthias for in Sweden after mine broke, that is just one of the most sentimental mods to me of all time. And I've got it topped with that Inokin, you know, Pibisardo Demetrius Eris tank. Yeah, I've been using this Eris tank. And I'm not gonna say too much because I'm saving it for a review, but this is a mouth to lung vape that I am really enjoying. Obviously, it's not going to win any cloud comps. This is a one ohm coil set to 20 watts. And I have the airflow closed down to like the last two little holes for just a somewhat tight, tight, tight mouth to lung vaping experience. But yeah, hopefully I'm going to have a review on this very soon, hopefully before the end of the year. And I know I keep saying that, like, hopefully I'm going to review this soon. Hopefully I'm going to review this soon. I've got a lot of stuff that is in the hopefully I'm going to review this soon phase. So that will all be getting rolled out, you know, throughout, uh, throughout December and throughout January. And just as a heads up before we get back down on the desk to do some news and advocacy, um, I'm going to have regular videos, hopefully throughout all of December. I'm going to have regular reviews and regular vlogs. And then in January, I'm actually going to be gone. I'm going to go back up to Tahoe to visit my family to hopefully get some skiing in if it's snowing up there. And then towards the middle of January, me and Dwayne and Kent and Coil Turd and Turk are all going to go out to the sand dunes. Dwayne's gonna take us out there. He's gonna make us ride motorcycles. He's gonna make us drive around on the sand and it should be a really fun and dangerous sounding time. I'm really excited about it. I'm gonna be bringing all of my camera stuff. I'm gonna be bringing my drone out there to hopefully shoot a whole bunch of like dope video that I can edit into uh, you know, bro trip out to the sand dunes. So that's gonna be happening in January and like I said I'm gonna try to keep my schedule here on YouTube relatively untouched I might miss a review here and there and I think there's actually gonna be one week where there is no vlog but for the most part I'm gonna to try to maintain my normal review vlog schedule here on YouTube anyway but yeah anyway that's what I got what we're gonna do right now is sit back down at the desk it's time to do some news and advocacy news and advocacy yeah all right cool so let's do some news and advocacy here at the desk. I got a few uh, updates from last week. Uh, a fellow named Christopher had left a comment on YouTube and he was talking about, remember last week we were talking about the Q Vapor pod system? This used to be called the Digiret, okay? So if you go on the internet and you search for Digiret, I know that I talked about Digiret a few times in the past, possibly in a couple of vlogs as well, but the Digiret is now the Q Vapor system. It's a thing we talked about last week if you want to if you want to learn about it watch last week's vlog but it's a pod system that someone was asking about it's not associated with big tobacco it's just kind of a cool banging little pod system but thank you thank you Christopher for remembering that it's called the digiret or that it used to be called the digiret Still one of the best tobacco flavors I've ever had from this thing. Also, one more uh, update from last week. Um, when I was in the comments of the week talking about that knife that I had got in Carson City with the, Ch it's a Chavez custom knife. I, I don't know anything about it. I still know very little about it, but Suave P in the comments had said, by the way, Nick, that Chaves or Chavez, I don't know how you say it. I think you say Chaves. He says, by the way, Nick, that Chaves custom made knife goes for 600 to $900 or so. That is amazing. That is way too expensive and nice of a knife 
for me to own. I feel like I honestly shouldn't own a knife that that's, that's that expensive or nice. And this is an insanely nice knife. So thank you again. We're gonna be using this in the vlog, in the vlog, yeah, of course we're gonna be using it in the vlog. We're gonna be using it in the viewer, no, not the viewer mail. Someday I'm gonna get this all right. From beginning to end, trust me, it'll happen. We're going to be using this knife in the vape mail segment. Yeah, wow, so much effort for such, just a simple statement that I wanted to get out there. We're gonna be using this in the vape mail segment and I'm very excited about it. I do have another update as well about those shears. Remember the vape shears, those little scissors for vaping, for cutting cotton? I love these little scissors, but I didn't know what hand turning in the United States is, but I got an update from the man himself who hand turns these shears. The hand turn side of these is that I sharpen each pair with a few different grits, then strop, which is a leather piece with diamond paste. Tuning is the manipulation of the blade to ensure even and continuous cutting as the shear opens and closes. I really am into sharp things, knives, etc. So when you need your knife sharpened, I'm your guy. I'll put hours into the blade until it's almost a mirror on the cutting surface. I had no idea that all of that was involved with hand tuning these shears and it really shows. And I know that they're just scissors. I get it that they're just scissors, but the effort that this guy puts into making these scissors an amazing cutting device is really awesome, and it turns into a really great pair of scissors. These are the only scissors that I have used for months now to cut my cotton. And yes, I do feel weird being on YouTube promoting scissors, but these are dope scissors, and they just kind of came out of nowhere. This guy emailed me, and he's like, hey, I, I make these scissors. I'd love for you to check them out. I fell in love with the scissors and now vape shears exists. And I think that's awesome. And I think that if you're looking for something fun, something nice, maybe even like a stocking stuffer for one of your vapor friends, these vape shears are fantastic for cutting cotton. Apparently all of my news is just going to be updates from last week, but a uh, fella named, a uh, fella on Instagram, fella on Instagram, fella on YouTube named I'm just me 39 says Nick great vlog. The pin for the monkey box juice bottle looks like a 14 to 20 gauge four inch blunt lure lock needle yeah so there you go a lot of people were telling me oh that's for a syringe it's for medical applications it's for this that and the other it's i'm glad to know what it is i don't really care what it's used for but i think we need to use those in vaping uh, inside squonk bottles if it's like a viable thing because that pin was awesome. Anyway, thank you, I'm just me 39 I know I know your real name. I know you have sent me viewer mails in the past, but I don't remember your name right now. So thank you. I'm just gonna use your YouTube name, which is I'm just me 39 Thank you. And this is actually gonna parlay into some actual news, but Battery Mooch left a comment on my YouTube video. We were talking about mech mods and how they vent and how you batteries in and how you put your batteries in and to me, positive side always goes up regardless of what anyone tells you. And Battery Mooch says, our round batteries do all vent entirely from the top via the venting disc under the top contact. This is knowledge that I wasn't 100% sure on. I didn't know if batteries all vented exactly from the top and Battery Mooch is reaffirming that yes, they all vent from the top. The only way they will vent from anywhere else is if they burst or split open. So there you go. All of our our batteries in the uh, you know in the unlikely event that you run into some sort of catastrophic battery failure your batteries will always vent from the top which is why people are putting vent holes on the bottom and telling you to flip your battery upside down so that the top is near the vent holes don't do that. You run a higher risk of actually hard shorting your batteries if they're in there upside down and they suddenly become, I don't know, contacted with the outside, you know, of the mech mod or the inside of the mech mod. Just a bad idea all around. I'm going to continue to say this. Just put your batteries in positive side up. Okay. Hey guys, I, I apologize for butting into my own vlog, but I had shot and edited a very long segment around batteries and batteries 
Battery Mooch in particular, something he had posted on Facebook. The thing he posted on Facebook is still on Facebook. It's still on my Facebook if anyone wants to read it. But a lot of that information between the time I shot the vlog and right now as I'm editing it has changed. Mooch has updated that particular information and changed a bunch of things as well. 11 hours ago on Reddit, Mooch made a post about the MVA limits that you know, was referencing the Facebook post. And so instead of showing you everything that I had recorded, which kind of was a little bit of outdated information, I don't have time to make a new segment for the vlog. So what I'm gonna do is just link in the description to what Battery Mooch has posted on Reddit and you should read it. Any vapor that uses batteries in their mod should definitely read this. It's regarding the MVA limits that he had been using before. Evidently, a lot of that information is changing and getting updated. I'm reading through it right now, but like I said, I don't have time to exactly put together a segment for the vlog, so I'm just gonna put a link down in the description to this Reddit post where everybody can read it and get the most up-to-date information. And then maybe it's something we can talk about in next week's vlog. So I'm not going to include the long segment that I had done about Battery Mooch and his Facebook post because like I said, a lot of that information isn't up to date now. But we are still going to talk a little bit about batteries in this vlog, so on with the vlog. And ultimately, at the end of the day, when we're using batteries and mods, whether it's regulated, unregulated, parallel, series, temperature control, whatever, just use the best batteries that you can. Good batteries are not expensive at all. I am planning on getting rid of every battery that I have. I have a drawer full of 18650 batteries that are anywhere from three years to a few months old. And I don't know which is which. Some of them have been lasting me a long time. The older ones have been really cutting off badly. Some of them have been getting warmer than other ones. Some of them have been rewrapped with other third party wraps. Like I bought those fucking Pickle Rick wraps and I rewrapped some of my batteries. And I don't remember which batteries are under the wraps just because I have so many freaking batteries in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of my batteries in a plastic sack. I'm going to take them to Best by to get recycled and I'm going to buy an entire new stock of batteries. I'm going to buy a bunch of Samsung 25Rs. I'm going to buy a bunch of Sony VTC5s. Those are the only batteries that I really want to use. Now I don't want this segment to run too long, but I did want to mention that Vigod Johnny, the Johnny of Vigod was on MTV. Apparently MTV has this new show called Amazingness or Amazing or Amazingness or something like that. And it's like, a modern day talent show type of thing. People show off their skills and our very own, you know, whatever team leader of V God was on there and he did a sick run. He did an awesome trick run and people were stoked. Like people were amazed at this. And this is something that we've been seeing. I mean, I've been seeing on Instagram for years now, but this is the first time. This is like a mainstream thing. This is a tricker from our community, Vajani, who is a great guy. I've known him for years. He was in that Blow Some O's music video with me. Doing tricks with my hand and shit that make him spin. He's been spotted in a bunch of my ECC videos. Hey babe. What's up, Vajani? I love Grim Creek. Oh my God. V God Johnny is a great guy and he's a great tricker and he he has worked really hard to become the tricker that he is and he was just on MTV and I think that's awesome. I think I I really like that. I think that's great and uh congratulations not just to V Johnny V God but all of the V God and all of the trickers out there that are really working really hard and hustling and get their naming out getting their name out there. I think that's fantastic. I, I love seeing that kind of stuff. So congratulations to V God Johnny. There isn't a whole lot right now going on with advocacy. What I would suggest that everybody do is I try to communicate advocacy as much as I can is regarding uh, flavor bans and state and local governments passing legislation about usage bans or raising the age or flavor bans and stuff like this. Where you can get a lot of this information is on the CASA website. Join CASA, become a member. You will get email call to actions. Go to the CASA call to actions email page or you know information page and they have everything listed there. I haven't seen anything major happening recently other than a picture I saw on Twitter recently of uh, 
senator, not senator, representative uh, Cole Bishop, Sanford Bishop from Cole Bishop. H.R. 1136 is very much alive and gaining momentum. H.R. 1136 is what we need to throw our full support behind. H.R. 1136, if it passes, can change the predicate date, which would be amazing for vaping. But what I saw recently is Sanford Bishop, one of the co uh, authors, I guess, of HR 1136, which by the way, HR 1136 has 90 co-sponsors now, nine zero co-sponsors right now. That is fantastic and we always need more. But 90 co-sponsors and Sanford Bishop, one of the co-authors of HR 1136, recently had a meeting with the newly appointed director of the FDA, Scott Godlib, I don't know what happened there. All I saw was this picture, but I can only assume since Scott Gottlieb is sort of re-evaluating the FDA deeming regulations and he's having a meeting with Sanford Bishop who co-authored HR 1136 to change the predicate date to protect vapor products in the industry, I can only assume, and I don't want to assume, but I really got my hopes up, I can only assume that something positive came out of that and that makes me not only very happy but very optimistic just seeing that picture of those two people together working together in a government that seems to be just going off the rails right now but seeing two people that could ch help change your industry sitting and having a meeting together i think is a very very exciting time and i have been getting let down by politicians left and right these days it's unbelievable what's happening in the government right now. I know not a lot of people really care about what I think about politics, but the government's going off the rails, man. I feel like anybody can see that. We have vaping to protect. We have net neutrality to protect, which if you haven't gone to battleforthenet.com yet, go to battleforthenet.com and help protect our internet. And yeah, I've been getting let down by politician Senator Ron Johnson from Wisconsin, who is a big, big, big vape supporter supporter, huge vape supporter. I was telling everybody, yes, we need to support Senator Ron Johnson because he's so pro-vaping. Senator Ron Johnson is anti-net neutrality. Senator Ron Johnson is pro-tax cut. That sucks. Duncan Hunter here in California, big vape advocate. He was the guy that was vaping during Congress. Huge vaping supporter also voted for the tax cut bill, also voted against net neutrality. I'm just getting let down left and right by politicians, so please, Cole Bishop, be on the up and up, be good politicians, please don't let me down. I was really disheartened to hear about Duncan Hunter. It really, I really believed in him. I met with him face to face and I really believed in him as a politician and now all he's done is let me down. You have to remember that these politicians and these representatives, they're elected by us. They work for us. So if you don't agree with the way they're voting, the best thing you can possibly do and what you have the freedom to do being a free American is to call them and contact them. If they're voting against things like net neutrality, you fucking call them and you tell them, you say, hey, what the crap is going on, man? I mean, don't do it like that. Be normal, be calm, be respectful, get your point of view across. And without saying it, just be like, what the hell is going on, man? They're supposed to be supporting things that directly affect their constituents and they are not doing that. Not with net neutrality, not with this tax cut bill, and not with vaping. So it's really crucial now more than ever to be contacting our representatives and telling them exactly how we feel about certain topics that are important to us. And for me, that includes vaping. And for me, that includes net neutrality. And for me, as a small business owner in California, yeah, that tax cut bill is just gonna fuck me. So we need to stay proactive. It's way easier to get ahead of this stuff. And I know I've said this a thousand times, but please always, you have the ability to contact your representatives directly and to give them your input. And if we all do that, the, then we can make a difference. And maybe that's the optimist in me, but I do believe, I do believe that we can make a difference. Yes. Anyway, that's about all I got for news and advocacy right now. I don't want that segment to run 
run too long. And I know that I always say that, and I don't want it to run too long. I did a two hour vlog two weeks ago, and I mean, come on, let's get real. That was too long. That was that was just way too long. Trying to keep these under an hour and 30. That's my goal. An hour and 30, I feel like, is a completely reasonable time for a vlog. If I had my way, I would just do an hour. Maybe I should do two one-hour vlogs instead of one two-hour vlog. <laughs> There's just so much. There's just so much going on. There's just so much I want to talk about, and that's what happens. So what we're going to do right now is we are still going to use a time machine machine for beer. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump in our time machine. We're going to go upstairs and we're going to taste some beer. All right, welcome back upstairs to taste some beer. For anybody curious, yes, the atmosphere squash is still there, alive and well. And I don't know how long squash, how long do squashes last just sitting on a countertop like that? I honestly don't know enough about squashes to even talk about that subject. But we're not here to talk about squash, we're here to talk about beer. So the beer that we're tasting today is from Ballast Point, local San Diego brewery that was just bought out by Big Beer. Okay, and actually the only reason reason I'm mentioning that is because later we talk about a veil being bought up or not bought up, but like, you know, the, what, what, what was that called? Minority investment that Big Tobacco made into a veil vapor, purchased some of a veil vapor. I do make some comparisons to Ballast Point. And for anyone curious, the beer segment is now the last thing I shoot in the vlog. So sometimes I reference things that have already happened, but those things are actually later in the vlog. It's just, it's weird. It's like a weird time machine thing. It's like a Philip K. Dick book. I'm already talking about stuff that you haven't seen yet. But this is Grunion from Ballast Point. I actually learned via the internet that Grunion was created at an employee only home brewing contest. So Ballast Point had a contest for all their employees, home brewing contest, and this is the beer that won. I've never had it before and I'm really looking forward to trying it. I'm going to be pouring it into this tulip duval glass that I got in Belgium. Yeah, just the whole bottle. Just the whole bottle there. Yeah, look at that. Head on there, Ruby Roo. Gonna have to drink through that like a man. It is uh, translucent, I guess. It's, it's very transparent. I can see everything through it. It's not cloudy or hazy in any way. This beer is described as a hoppy pale ale. So let's just dive right in. Cheers. Here's to you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Super. It's, uh, it's sweet. It's caramely. It is a hoppy pale ale. It is a very clean, clean beer. Now I know I say this about a lot of beers, so let me check the ABV on here. Yeah, 5.5%. I don't know, sessionable, not sessionable? I don't know. I could actually see myself drinking a, a couple of these in a row and, and being just fine. So while it's not a sessionable beer, it is a very easy, easy drinking beer. Yeah, I like this. I like beers like this. I like beers like this that are hoppy and malty and a little bit of like caramely sweetness and they're not IPAs. I know I say this a thousand times on video, but I very much do not like IPAs. The list of IPAs that I actually enjoy is very small. I think it's three. And so I like having like a nice hoppy beer like this that really reminds me that I'm drinking a beer, but not have it be like overwhelming like IPAs. And I don't know why IPAs do that. IPAs always go to that extreme, just like hop craziness, hop madness, just the most hops ever in your face. It never is, is never appealing to me. So it's nice to have like an IPA-ish style beer. It's still malty, it's still hoppy, but it's not an IPA and that makes me very, very happy. Yeah, so uh, what I brought up here to pair this with is something that we're going to see in the first impressions after the vape mail. This is the Mike Vapes Iconic RDA sitting on top of my vintage Keurig tin from Michelle Lynn Bass. I got this loaded up with Fall Delight, which in my opinion is a tobacco flavor. It tastes like tobacco and it vapes like tobacco. And I have a feeling that this, unlike last week, that this is actually going to be a very nice beer pairing. So let's give it a shot. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful pairing. This beer is complementing this tobacco juice 
perfectly. It actually makes the beer taste a little bit sweeter. There's some sort of like a cedary type of woody, and I don't want to say woody like it's a negative thing. It's not like dry wood, but it's like a a, a rich tree bark sort of situation happening in this juice, which I realize that's a really fucking weird thing to say, man. But it's got that like earthy sweet component to it. It's really complimenting the hoppy maltiness of this beer. They complement each other very well. I- I'm into this. Finally, I did a good beer pairing. I'm not tasting like, uh, you know, a stout with fucking rainbow sherbet in the dark. I actually just need to keep this fall delight juice around just for beer pairings. I have like three three beer pairing juices, and now this is one of them. Mm. Fuck, it's good. It's good, it's good, it's good. It is great. These two things go just fantastic together. And you know, it's one of those things. It's like, that's why I like tobacco vapes when I'm drinking a beer, because I used to drink a lot of beer and smoke cigarettes. So to me, beer goes with tobacco. Beer goes with cigarettes. And since I haven't had a cigarette in eight years, now beer goes with tobacco juices. So looking over on beeradvocate.com, this is a pretty well-rated beer. It's a four out of five, and it's 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 pretty highly rated. I always like seeing what the top raters on Beer Advocate have to say about any given beer. On tap, 2014, pours a hazy orange with a foamy off-white head that settles into a film on top of the beer. Foamy swaths of lace form around the glass on the drink down. Smell is of malt, citrus zest, and herbal hop aromas. Yeah, herbally. That's the way that I would describe this. Herbally. Like, like, not dirt, but like... Imagine more like a potting soil, like a rich, herbally sort of potting soil. That's what I get out of this. There's a mild amount of hot bitterness on the palate with each sip. This beer has a good level of carbonation or effervescence and a crisp mouthfeel. Overall, this is a gold beer. Oh, good beer. I thought he said gold beer. I was going to think that was way cooler. Overall, this is a good beer with a nice citrus forward hop qualities all around. Yeah, it's great. It's a great beer. It's an easy drinking beer. I get less citrus out of it and more like a caramely-ish sweetness. Not over Overwhelming, not like caramel, but like a caramely ish sweetness. A very easy drinking beer. Uh, I'm almost done with it. We might as well just have one more vape beer toot and call it good. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's not much left. I might as well just finish that off. Here's to you. Cheers. I'm going to toast. You know what I'm going to make a toast to? Here's a toast. Here's a toast to Vaping Bogan. As far as I know, the only other vaping YouTube channel that drinks beer on video. Bro, we have to get together someday and have a fucking beer. If you're ever in the United States or if I'm ever in Australia, yeah, this is gonna be harder than I thought it was. Anyway, bro, we got ECC coming up in February. Love to have you out and we can sit down and have a fucking beer together. Anyway, yeah, that's going to wrap up the beer segment. So what we're going to do is go downstairs and open some vape mail. And spoiler alert, the iconic RDA from Mike Vapes is in there. We set it up and we vape it. All right, cool. Well, I got my black, uh, you know, dog food flavored dog food scented uh, garbage bags. It's time to open some vape mail and we are going to use my $600 to $900 estimated value Chavez custom knife that was so graciously given to me in Carson City to open all of this vape mail. And I just don't look forward to DHL packages anymore, if I'm being real honest. This is why I'm opening it first, because I'm kind of like, eh, I don't know if I really care what's in here right now. First package from DHL. This is uh, from Vandy Vape. Okay, this is the new Mike Vapes Iconic RDA. I do want to take a look at it, although there is a uh, Merry Christmas gift involved here, which I am going to open as well. Merry Christmas. Oh, look at that. It's a pop-up Christmas card. To Nick, may the Christmas season fulfill your home with joy, your heart with love, and your life with laughter. Uh, 
Roy Vandy Vape team. Well, cool. Well, th thank you very much, Roy. That's very thoughtful of you. And I really, I, I like this little hop up uh, Christmas card action happening right here. But what I really want to do is I want to take a look at this iconic. I mean, this might be something that I set up in the vlog. As much as I don't really want to build another RDA right now, this iconic might get built. All right, there you go. It's the iconic from Mike Vapes. I don't have a mod to put this on to take a look at the deck. Hang on. This airflow on this thing looks crazy. It honestly looks like uh, the Squidood airflow. It's got an upward, a upward angled slot as well as upward angled like, uh, you know, I hate to say it, recoil style airflow ovals that are angled. Huh. That's, uh, that's interesting. It makes for an interesting airflow, but it honestly makes for a really ugly outside of the RDA. I do not find this aesthetically appealing at all. That upside down, that upside down sort of emoji face looks to be 810 compatible and the deck looks to be, uh, clampy style. Looks like a clampy style deck. Oh, weird. There's a screw and then there's kind of just a loose piece of metal in there. There's kind of a loose piece of floating metal in there. Huh. That is uh, both very strange and interesting. I'll show you guys a couple pictures of this deck, but it appears to be these big holes and then screws on top that kind of press down on these sort of L-shaped free-floating brackets of metal. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, that's it's a thing. It's the iconic. And look, I know that nobody really cares about cloning and clones and blah, 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 and whatever stuff like this, but it does come with two very dock tippy looking tips. Uh, I feel like it's, eh, I don't want to say shitty, but I feel like it kind of bums me out that Vandy Vape was just like, oh yeah, we, we can totally clone those dock tips. Let's do a, let's do a black dock tip and then a, a white frosted dock tip as well. I know not really a lot of people care about that and I don't really care about it. It's just one of those things that I look at and I kind of go, ah, someone else thought of that. So got that black dock tip on there. Very open, very open and swooshy airflow. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna have to close down that airflow for show. Yeah, one hole and then half of a slot open right there. That is nice. That is nice and smooth and swooshy. Interesting. All right. Yeah, that's it. I'm going to have to build this. I'm going to have to build it and vape it in this video. I also have a package here from Aspire, which I haven't got anything from Aspire in a really long time. The last thing I got from Aspire was that speeder kit that was not great. It was not really that good. The coil heads were really junky. The tank wasn't easy to work with. I did not enjoy that device really at all, but I'm really interested to see what is in here. All right, so first things first, it's a gigantic Aspire vape mat. You know, I'm not a huge Aspire fanboy. That actually looks kind of cool. I kind of like the way they did that with all of like the devices and coils and things and that that actually does look kind of cool all right and we got the sky star revo kit what why 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 do they name it terrible things the sky star revo kit from aspire you know uh, maybe it's just me being old and curmudgeon -y these days but i get very unexcited for things like this just Another Aspire mod that they called the Sky Star Revo kit. It's 100% uh, plastic. That that ain't metal. That that's uh, that's shiny plastic on top of a what looks to be a bluey swirlish uh, design. I have no idea. Oh, the buttons right there. The buttons at the top. Okay, interesting. And I might need to read the instruction manual for this because I see no, I put some batteries in here and I see no way to adjust. Is it a touch screen? Where's the instructions? Oh, okay. And it, it comes with an RDTA. Oh, wait, no, this isn't an RDTA. What the fuck is this? I'm going to show you a picture of what I'm looking at right now, but I honestly, have no idea what this is or how you use it. I guess that's what instructions are for, but at first glance, this is incredibly confusing to look at. Seems to be a cone of sorts, and then there's some holes, and then a tank at the bottom. Maybe that's a coil head? Maybe that's a coil head in there? 
I don't know what those holes are for. I have no idea what's going on in here, and I don't want to really get into this right now. Oh god, there's little unscrewy things and little pins, and there's like it's this is like a little plunger thing. And this whole AFC closes right here. Okay, it's whatever. This is just vape mail. I don't have to set it up right now. But yeah, it's got a weird tank. It's it's kind of a weird mod that I don't see any way to adjust it. Oh, it says it's a touch screen. While the mod is on, swipe down on the screen twice. It will take Take the mod into the menu interface where you can adjust the settings to your own liking. Swipe down twice? Modes. Wattage mode. Okay, how do you adjust the wattage? System? Vape time, brightness, language, default, no. Modes. Wattage. How do you adjust your wattage? Alright, whatever, Aspire. Good lord, I'm putting you away. First, I'm taking my batteries back. So yeah, I got an Aspire Revo Sunstar Revo kit in the mail. <laughs> Sorry, Skystar Revo kit in the mail that I am clearly, thoroughly unimpressed by at the moment. And like I said, maybe that's just me being jaded after vaping for eight years, but I am already upset at that Aspire device. Someday. Someday vaping will be a, a, a more simple process than swipe down twice on the touchscreen to go to the menu interface system. Am I being too hard on it? Am I being too hard on the Aspire Skystar Revo kit? I have no idea, but let's open another package. This one just says it's from EDVC ECVD. Oh, okay. Uh, this is from Bo, actually. Hey, Nick, we sincerely appreciate you checking out the Bo. Please be honest as possible in your YouTube review, please mention uh, Bo Vaping in your video and bio. Thank you, Team Bo. Okay, so Bo reached out to me again, and I used to own the Bo, and I used to vape the Bo a bunch, and then the Bo started sucking, just sucking the worst suck that has ever sucked. The pods would just empty themselves into the battery and kill your battery. How's that for being real honest? I had the bow complete little set sitting inside the charger. It came with this cool slidey charger. You just dropped it in and it charged your bow batteries and you could pull it out like a almost like a pack of cigarettes and vape it and I thought it was amazing. And then I left it sitting for like two days and the pod completely emptied itself into the internals of my battery and killed the battery. I've killed four bow batteries just because of their leaky pods. And when they reached out to me again, I said, yeah, look, I mean, I'll try it out, but I have to tell you right now, I have had terrible experiences with the bow. With the bow. When the bow is working well, it is a fantastic vape. It is a delicious mouth to lung vape. But when the entire tank, the entire pod, empties itself inside my battery and kills my battery, which it's done four times, by the way, I have very little faith in it. I was like, is this anything that's been new and improved or is this the same junky old bow system? And she assured me, she said, no, 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 this is the, this is the best, newest, most, uh, that, that beeping sound is my uh, battery charger. That means it's an 18650 is charged now. But she says, no, no, this is the best version of the bow. It, it doesn't do that. It doesn't leak. It doesn't do any of this stuff. So let me send you some new bow stuff. So what I have in my possession is some new bow stuff. And it looks like they added little graffiti guy art to their batteries as well. That actually is kind of cool. And they must think I really like menthol because they sent me fresh kiwi berries on ice and then icy mint ice menthol. All right, well, we're gonna give the bow another chance. If the same thing happens, if the pods leak through the whole battery and kill my batteries, then yeah, obviously you guys will know about it. I'll put it up on my YouTube. As they said, please be as honest as possible in writing from Team Bow. I appreciate that, Team Bow. And yes, I'm going to be as honest as possible. But man, man, that bow, that old bow, that really pissed me off, man. I got another package here from Alex, and I'm honestly not 100% sure if this is vape mail or not. Oh, yeah, okay. So this is from Times Vape. This is the Apex RDA. This is a dripper. Ah, I remember. I remember. I remember talking to you, Alex. Oh, and he put Grim Green on it. Oh, look at that. He did a cool thing. It's, it's always very cool when a manufacturer or something like that puts your logo on something. I, I really appreciate that. It doesn't necessarily make it a better atomizer or a better mod or anything like that, but it is, it's cool. I like seeing that kind of stuff. 810 compatible. 
how do I get this out of here? Where did I, what the hell? Where did I put that iconic? It's truly and honestly a little bit similar to the iconic, like shape, height, size, even where it tapers at the top. It's just interesting. I'm not making any wild accusations. I'm just pointing out that they do look very similar. Although this deck is 100% completely crazily different. Oh, this comes out of the box. Set up for squonking. Two O-rings on the bottom. Really weird, really bizarre deck. Wonder what the point of that little tab right there is. I'll show you a picture of what I'm looking at, but I kind of have no idea what that little tab is for right there. It's got these big screws. Look how big those screws are on the side. Little juice well, O-rings on the outside. Then there's some holes on this side. There's some holes on the top as well. And then there's that little tab that's kind of sticking out there on the positive post that I have no idea what it does. What is the function of that little tab? Anyway, that's kind of an interesting deck. So yeah, cool. And it does have two giant, giant airflow slots in here. And you can close just the top or just the bottom off, which is actually quite cool. <sighs> Airy, just wow, the most airy RDA. Okay, Apex from Times Vape, good to know. Got another package here that uh, actually came from Vinyl and Vapor and I have no idea what he sent me. And I, again, I don't even know if this is actually vape mail or not. What I do during the week is I rarely open packages during the week. Packages that arrive here, I wait and open them here on video. Basically every package I get gets opened here on video. Sometimes it's not even vape mail, but we're gonna see where this goes. Oh, this is juice. All right. Oh, okay. Well, I think I know what I'm going to vape this week in the uh, very random juice tasting. There's a juice in here called Hooch and the description is pure banana. And that sounds awesome to me right now. Oh God. And I hate packing peanuts with a fiery passion. Why packing peanuts? Why? They stick to everything and make a mess and they stick to my hands and terrible. We got some juice. looks like we got the full line twice, which means, yeah, these are going to go into the $2 sale pile or at least some of the bottles. I might actually vape some of this juice. Oh, there is a, there's, this is a bunch of juice. This is Versa. This is hooch. We got two bottles of hooch. Oh, I remember Eric was telling me about this juice. Vinyl and Vapor was telling me about this juice and he was just raving about it. I can't wait. The first one I wanna try, three milligram, pure banana. That description alone, just this branding that just says hooch, pure banana. It just looks so cool. And the flavor description of it as pure banana. Oh, that sounds like something I'm really into. And all of these flavors come from Gold Leaf Drip. They have Dawn, which is an aged bourbon cream, light on the bourbon, heavy on the cream, no sprinkles or rainbows here. Mature, full, rich bodied. Dawn is a genuine bourbon cream blended to its core. Subtle notes of chocolate, coffee, and pecans round out this distinctive and decadent concoction. Ah, oh, that sounds so good. That description alone sounds better than like the thousand other like hot sweetness juices that exist right now. Sorry, I realize I, I'm sounding really elitist and I'm not meaning to sound like so elitist like, oh, my special juice is so much better than the garbage that you vape. Vape whatever you want. Vape what you love. Please vape what you love. I respect people so much more for just sticking to their guns and loving what they love. Please just vape whatever you want. I'm not trying to rag on hot sweetness juices. I'm just saying for me as a 40 year old male that has been vaping for eight years now, Something like this, something a little bit more crafty, something a little bit maybe more grown up is very appealing to me. All right, Gold Leaf, well, let's see what you got. And you never know. You know what I mean? All these juices could be garbage. I I'm hoping they're not, and I'm trusting Vinyl and Vapor's palette on this. But a lot of these juices could just be garbage. They could just be terrible. But anyway, thank you so much, Gold Drip Leaf. Gold Leaf, I better keep this out so I remember the name of the company. Gold Leaf Drip slash Eric Vinyl and Vapor. Thank you for sending me these juices. 
this week we are going to be tasting that pure banana hooch. All right, and this is the last package, and I know where this came from, and I know what's in here. This came from Vaporgate out of Denver, Colorado, and I think Yosh is releasing a sub ohm tank. Yosh did those, so Vaporgate did those, uh, you know, the Masons, those big RDAs. And I'm honestly surprised after what I said about the Mason 40 millimeter that Yosh would even talk to me anymore, because I did not like that RDA at all. But a lot of people did. And again, that's okay, because this is just my opinion. But he sent me uh, the new tank that they were doing called the Dooley. D-O-O-L-E-E, -E, the Dooley. An elevated premier sub tank made by Vaporgate. Black ones, stainless steel one. Oh, there's a few in here. There's black ones. There's stainless steel ones. Great. Awesome. Great and awesome. I'm stoked. He sent a few of these. He sent a bunch of these actually. I asked him to send some extra so that I could I could give some to my patrons. The Dooley, an elevated premier sub tank. It says on the back it's compatible with uh, Cleto 120 and TFV8 styled coils. And I'm assuming they have their own coil heads. Oh, pardon me. I'm not sure where that came from. I'm assuming they have their own coil heads as well for this tank. Coil style swap instructions. Unscrew the tank from the deck, remove the coil from the deck, unscrew the 510, remove the 510, be sure to leave the replace the cleaner, screw together, place. Okay, cool. Oh, fuck. This is a honkin' tank. The picture on the box makes it look much smaller. That is a honkin' big sub-ohm tank, bro! Oh, okay. Top slides off. You got two big juice fill holes there. Top slides back on. Does this, this meant to come completely off here? Assuming when you have a drip tip in, this doesn't come completely off. But with no drip tip, it just slides right off. Fuck. Okay. Well, this is a very, very cool looking sub-ohm tank. I'll give you that much, Yosh. So far, without even vaping it, this is a cool looking sub-ohm tank. And I honestly really like the purple O-rings on there. I want something purple to run this on. Oh, holy fuck. That's the coil head. I thought for sure I was looking at like a chimney or something that went around a coil, but this is the actual coil head. This is a Smoke V8 X4 coil head. I have never used a Smoke XV48 coil head, V8 X4 coil head, so I'm excited. I'm excited to try this out. Thanks for the tank, Yosh. It does look very cool. In this video, I will be setting up the iconic RDA, but in the next vlog, chances are very good that I will be vaping this in my what I've been vaping because I'm dying to try this tank. Oh yeah, well, cool. Oh yeah, look at that. Fuck, that looks cool. That is a bitchin' looking tank, dude. <sighs> Lots of smooth, swooshy airflow. That is fully open and it's not too airy. I have a feeling I might be really enjoying this tank, Yosh. Thank you for sending it out to me. It does have a frosted glass assembly as well. Like you can put a frosted glass tank on here into it. I'm into this. I'm into this so far without even vaping it. I'm into it. I just hope it vapes as good as it looks. Anyway, that's it. I've made a mess of my office, but that's going to that's gonna wrap up some uh, vape mail right there. And what we're going to do right now, or what I'm going to do right now actually is clean up. And then I'm going to build that Vandy Vape Iconic RDA. And we will be right back here to vape it. And it'll be so seamless. You won't even be able to tell it happened. Watch. And just like that, my office is clean and I have built wicked and juice the mike vapes vandy vape iconic rda magic of video editing anyway like i said i built this and i wicked it i have not even taken one single toot on it yet but i did juice it up with that fall delight tobacco flavor uh from where who does this sage sage nicotine salts this is a six milligram it's designed to be a lung inhale uh you know uh, salt nick juice which there's not a lot of and so uh i'm surprised that i actually really really like this flavor a lot anyway it's not about the flavor we're talking about the iconic right now so i got it built it wasn't super easy to build this deck is just a weird ass fucking deck there's two big floating metal l shapes in there and you can kind of do a center post build through the middle you could kind of do uh you know a center post build just through the pier out ones but what i did is I put one through the bottom, you know, one through the lower uh, post hole, even though it's not really a post hole, it's like a opening. I put my bottom lead through the bottom and I put my top lead through the top and it's 
weird. You kind of have to bend your coils in very unnatural positions to get this to work correctly. And keep in mind, this is the first time that I'm building with this, so it's not, this is literally just a first impressions. Good Lord. And I had a bitch of a time building on it. I had to bend my leads into weird and interesting ways to get them. And then you kind of raise your coils up and you, and you do this thing. And then you kind of, I don't know, you position your coils and you lower them just low enough to be a of that airflow. I don't know. There's no guidelines like how high or low you're supposed to set your coil. So I kind of just guessed. It is actually fairly conducive to blowing your juice. I have the ability to just squeeze my juice right through the top and it'll kind of get where it gets. I only did that once. So I don't know how those little angular tubes, if those are going to like collect juice and then you'll have juice coming out of your airflow. I don't know. I haven't got that far yet, but let's try it. Let's take our first toot on the mic vapes iconic i've turned it down to half the airflow i have one hole open and then half of the slot open these are some m turk aliens on here i'm running it on the dual parallel vintage curate tin again see how it goes great huh? that was a fucking great vape With the airflow closed down halfway, it's nice. It's not too airy. It's just kind of in that medium middle part of the airflow, the way that I like it. It is nice and smooth. Let me give it another bleh test. Let's see if I can bleh my juice through the top. Yeah, bleh. No juice coming out the airflow holes. I like what I'm seeing here. I love to bleh, and I love it when juice doesn't come out of the airflow holes, and this RDA just accomplished both of those things. I am using it with that white, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to call these. They're not clones. I'm going to call them counterfeit, okay? And I know people are going to be pissed off by that, but this is a counterfeit dock tip. I've seen this happen before in the vape industry, and it sucks. Many years ago, there was a guy named Chuff. His name was Chuff, and he invented the Chuff cap for atomizers. And then as soon as China saw that and got a hold of that terminology, Chuff caps. They started releasing Chuff caps all over the place. Counterfeit Chuff caps. And poor Chuff, one guy, you can't compete with China. Yeah, he just completely went out of business. And it's a goddamn shame because that guy invented something that changed the industry. And then as soon as China got a hold of it, they just ruined it. And now everything comes with chuff caps. And poor Chuff gets no credit. But Chuff invented the chuff cap. And these knurled tips are called dock tips. And they come from one specific place. And he makes them and calls them dock tips. So the fact that Vandy Vape is including their own counter Counterfeit dock tips, yeah, that not only kind of upsets me, but I'm going to continue calling them counterfeit dock tips unless I'm using an actual real dock tip. Sorry, I'm a stickler for that. I want to give credit to the people that actually created this and not just China copying it and mass producing it. And that might rub some people the wrong way. Da. This is a counterfeit dock tip, and that's what I'm calling it. But moving on from that, the vape that I'm getting from this Iconic right now is baller. I just bled my juice all over the place. Nothing leaked out, and the vape it is spectacular. It's good. Maybe not spectacular. Maybe that was a little bit strong word to use during a first impressions, but it's good. This is a very good and nice vape. The airflow is smooth. The flavor is plentiful. I'm not in love with the way this atomizer looks. I think the AFC, I think the way that they did the airflow on this just kind of makes it a little bit uglier of an atomizer. I think incorporating the airflow into your overall RDA design is something that needs to be included and not just having this tube with like a weird slot and then two upside down angular holes. To me that it just kind of looks ugly. But the vape I'm getting from it is rad. This is a damn good vape. So yeah, there you go. It's the Iconic and I'm vaping on it. It wasn't super easy to build. It was actually kind of a little annoying to build. I can tell from building on it once that I'm not gonna be in love with this deck. I'm gonna try a few more builds. I'm gonna throw some round wire builds in there. I'm gonna throw some other aliens and stuff in there. These happen to be M-Turk aliens. I'm gonna try a whole bunch of coils, whole bunch of builds, whole bunch of round builds, and just see how easy this deck is to build on. I will say that this is a breeze to wick. I mean, just the easiest, thing I've ever wicked. And the vape I'm getting from it ain't half bad.
Yeah, good, good, good and nice. All right. Well, well done, Vandy Vape. Well done, Mike Vapes. The iconic. It might be weird to build on, and it might look ugly with that airflow, but damn, I'm getting a good vape from this. I can blend my juice. It's easy to wick. This isn't a full review. This is just first impressions. What am I doing? So there you go. It's good, and it's set up, and I'm vaping it. So right now, what we're going to do is go upstairs. Well, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do right now is eat lunch, and then after lunch, we're going to pop upstairs, and we're going to do a very quick quick. I don't know why I say that every time. It's not going to be very quick. It might actually be a little bit long. I don't know. I can't say that yet. I haven't shot it. But what we're going to do is go upstairs and do some retro vaping after lunch. After lunch, we're going to do retro vaping. All right, what's up guys? We're up here after lunch in my very well-lit corner of the living room and you can see my TV now and you can see my, my Christmassy screensaver going on on my TV. No big deal. It's whatever. We're up here and we're going to do some retro vaping and what I have to retro vape today is probably the least matchy-matchy setup that I've ever used in my life. On top of my stabilized wood acrylic Axis Vapes M17 that I love so much, I got the Dot Mod Petri version 2 RDA with, it's a black barrel with a blue top cap and then a red drip tip. That's what I grabbed out of my drawer to put together. And yeah, it's ugly. It's super ugly. But I really wanted to revisit this RDA. This RDA, the, the Dot Mod Petri version 2, was my favorite RDA for a very long time. And it's still a stellar, stellar vape. And I'm not going to get involved in the politics of the vape industry. A lot of people ask me why I don't review Dot Mod stuff anymore. It's as simple as dot mod doesn't reach out to me and I am more loyal to my friends than I am to dot mod and with that said the RDA that my friends designed is top-notch this is a great RDA and it's still a great RDA I just haven't vaped it in a really long time and I'm hoping it's as good as I remember I have a very simple 22 gauge round wire build in here this is canthal this is like a 9 or a 10 wrap I think it's a 9 wrap on a 3 millimeter I don't remember what the resistance came out to. No, no, this is not a nine wrap. Hang on, now I have to count wraps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is an eight wrap, 22 gauge, nichrome anarchist wire build on here. It was a two post deck. It's super simple to build on, super simple to wick. And this was a 22 millimeter atomizer. And that's one of the things that made the flavor on the Petri V2 and the V1, honestly, so simple stellar, just stellar flavor because of that size, because of that 22 millimeter diameter. I brought some uh, Surf, Surf Satisfying up here to vape on this just because I haven't vaped this juice in a while. I know it's delicious and I'm interested to see how delicious it tastes on this Petri V2. And if this is something that I'm going to keep around, like if I'm going to keep vaping this, like I just re-fall in love with the Petri V2, I am definitely going to have to make it look a little more aesthetic aesthetically appealing than having the black barrel with the blue top and then the red drip tip. That is just, Nick, what are you doing? Yeah, it's a 0.17. Let's see. Uh, that's 60 watts. We could probably turn this up a little bit more. 0.17 at 80 watts. Yeah, there we go. That's the vape ores I'm looking for. You know, now that I'm sitting here juicing these wicks up, the, the Dot Mod Petri version 1 and version 2 were not very conducive to blowing your juice. I mean, uh, okay, I guess it is a little bit and I just flooded it so I'm gonna need a paper towel. Good lord, Nick. All right, cool. So we got this all loaded up. Surf satisfying dot mod Petri V2. Let's just give it a shot here. Did anybody else hear that whistle sound when I purged? I have never noticed that before. Has anybody noticed that before? Am I crazy? I have vaped this atomizer at least a quadrillion times and I have never noticed that sound. Well, there you go. That's interesting. Learn something new every day. When you purge on the Petri V2, it whistles, or at least this barrel whistles. Anyway, let's talk about how it actually vapes. Amazing. Unbelievable. Flavor's amazing on it. Airflow, even though it whistles when you purge, when you breathe in, it's nice and smooth. It's swooshy. It's perfect. These single holes in the Petri was like my preferred just 
perfect, perfect airflow. It was so beautiful and nice and flavorful, and it was just that perfect amount of resistance. Now, I might actually like it a little bit more open. Remember when they released the cloud cap that had the two holes in it? I think that was my favorite thing of all time. But the flavor on this is still baller, baller flavor. And it's because it's just that little 22 millimeter diameter RDA. It was just, you know, it was almost lightning in a bottle. It was like that perfect size, that good airflow, that nice deck. You just get a good vape and delicious flavor. Well, I might have to make this a little bit more matchy-matchy because -matchy I'm really enjoying this vape. The Petri V2 definitely stands the test of time. But Lord, that is still a great vape. I kind of want to just sit here and keep vaping this. Okay, I can't just sit here and keep vaping this. We do have to move on with the vlog, but let me say, Petrie V2, banging, banging flavor. Just banging flavor from a dripper. Even with just simple round wire build in here, this is an eight wrap, like I already said. I'm repeating myself. Eight wrap, 22 gauge, nichrome, three millimeter, built it, wicked it, vaped it. The flavor is banging. Can I repeat myself some more? But yeah, anyway, that's retro vaping. Good to know that the Petri V2 still holds up. I still think it's a great RDA. Uh, I'm gonna continue to use this particular one because this is the one that I'm sentimental about. Okay, so we're all done retro vaping, and what I wanna do now is, uh, I've already eaten lunch, so we're good to go. I'm gonna pop back downstairs, and we are going to do a getting to know Grim Green. All right, cool. So we're going to do getting to know Grim Green. And I've decided that getting to know Grim Green is now going to be multiple different topics instead of me talking for like eight minutes on one subject. So the first question is going to be a video question. So let's hear from James. What up, Grim? James here. And I was just wondering, have you ever been to Lynchburg, Tennessee and went on the Jack Daniels tour? I mean, if you ever come down, hit me up. I'd love to go with you. <laughs> Later, Nick. <laughs> uh, no, James, I've actually never been to the state of Tennessee, and I've never been to Lynchburg, Tennessee, and I've never gone on the Jack Daniels tour, as much as I would actually really like to do that. The only cool toury type of, you know, alcohol thing that I've ever done is when I was in Ireland, I went to the Guinness uh, Brewery. We went to the Guinness Brewery. You go through this whole museum and they show you like, oh, Guinness things, and here's how the hops happen, and here's how other things happen, and here's how we, we, we brew it. We do the, the brewing things and, and things with, with water and stuff, and then they show you how to do that, and then you go to the top of a real tall building, and you have the whole city of Dublin that you can look out on, and you get a free pint of Guinness and you kind of stand around and you drink your pint of Guinness and you Guinness and you look at Ireland and then that's what you do and that's the experience and I had a fantastic time doing that I haven't got to go on that tour, but that's something that I, I think I would really like to do. I would really be into that. And honestly, if I'm down there and I ever do that, hit me up, email me, dude. Let's let's go to the let's go to the factory. Let's go to the distillery. Let's go see how Jack Daniels is made. Uh, anyway, James, thank you for your question. I got two. I got three all together. I think I'm gonna limit getting to know Grim Green to either two or three questions. Um, there's another getting to know Grim Green here from Alex who writes in and says, I want to start by saying that. You are free to use my name and read this email in your vlog. As we all know, you're a huge Star Wars fan, and I wanted to know your thoughts on the newest trailer of Star Wars Episode 8, and also what you thought about Porg, the newest addition to the Star Wars main cast. Stay vapey, and may the Force be with you. Um, yes, so I'm not exact. I'm not going to answer this question right now, although I am an insanely huge Star Wars fan, and I am overly, overly excited for the premiere of Star Wars Episode Eight this week. I got my friends coming in from New York City. We're going to go see Star Wars. We're going to go to Disneyland, and then we're going to go see Star Wars again. So I don't have any Star Wars thoughts for you right now, but how about next week in the Getting to Know Grim Green segment? I'm just going to do... 
I don't know, a little, uh, my, my little review of Star Wars Episode Eight. Maybe I'll, I'll just throw that out there. We'll make a little, like, five-minute segment, and we'll talk all about Star Wars Episode Eight. We can do that next week after the movie comes out, and I would definitely, definitely talk about that. As far as the trailers go, uh, amazing. I mean, amazing. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and so they know what to do to get hardcore Star Wars fans like me really stoked to see a movie. They cut these trailers, and you got Luke Skywalker, and you got Rey and Kylo Ren, and you got all the characters, and I'm I'm just really stoked. I think the trailers have been great. I think that Disney is sticking with that tradition of not spoiling the movie through trailers. Not like what Batman v Superman did, where it basically showed you the whole movie and then showed you the big villain that they have to fight at the end, and you go, okay, well, I've, I feel like I've already seen the movie. Disney and Lucasfilm, Star Wars, they do a great job of releasing these trailers that get me really really excited for the movie, but don't give away anything. Like they don't spoil anything or give away any like major plot points or anything like that. And that is what makes me really excited to see this movie. I think the trailers have been great. I don't know anything about the little Porgs other than they're probably going to be like for the kids. That's it. That the Porgs are a thing for the kids. They're, they're like, the Porgs are like Ewoks back in the day, man. I was a little kid when Return of the Jedi came out and I loved Ewoks. I loved Ewoks. And so, yeah, I don't know if the Porgs are, are fine. I've seen a Porg do one thing and there's that shot of the Millennium Falcon with Chewie and the Porg's like, ah! that's what I've seen a Porg do. That's what I'm basing my Porg judgment on is that one little scene, but they seem cool. They look cool. I don't really care. It's probably for the kids. I'm much more interested in everything else that's going on in Star Wars Episode Eight. But yeah, next week, Getting to Know Grim Green, we'll just talk about Star Wars Episode Eight a little bit, as well as other Getting to Know Grim Green questions. And then this Getting to Know Grim Green question from Ku Kua Kau. I can't pronounce your name, and I'm sorry. It's spelled K O U K I. Kouki? Kouki? I feel like I'm just saying cookie like Kouki Crisp. Sorry, I, I, I'm not really not intending this to be offensive or to slam you. I literally just don't know how to pronounce a lot of things in the world. And your name, sir, happens to be one of them. But Kauki writes in and says, what's up, Grim? My name is Scott. Okay. Well, so Scott writes in, Scott from Wisconsin, getting to know Grim Green question. Uh, I live and breathe cars. So what kind of car do you drive? What is your dream car? What's your worst car experience? Do you consider yourself a car guy? guy. I've been SIG free for over a year now because of the car community. Keep being a boss, Nick. You can use my name on the show. Absolutely, Scott or Kouki. I'm not sure even what to call you anymore. Um, but Scott, no, I've never been a car guy. The thing is, I, I got a lot of, of my interests and, and my mannerisms and, and, and everything from my dad. And my dad was never a car guy. My dad was also never really a big sports ball guy, not a big football guy, which is why now I do not watch football. I was never really a car guy, but I appreciate cars. My dad appreciated cars. My dad used to take us up to Virginia City in Nevada for, I don't don't remember the actual name of it, but we called it the Ferrari Hill Climbs. And I know that's not really what it's called, but basically this was a privately organized thing where amateur drivers could take their, you know, $300,000 Ferrari and race it up a really windy hill from Carson City to Virginia City. And it's uphill and it's really kind of windy and stuff like that. And we would get our little camp spot and you see these Ferraris just come flying by, like one at a time, you're like, Vroom, and you're like, oh, what was that? A Ferrari Testarossa? Fuck yeah, that was cool. And there's like, you know, all these other supercars, like Lamborghinis. You see like a Lamborghini Countach or like a Mustang or a Ferrari or a lot of Porsche 911s as well. So I'm not really a car guy, but cars are fucking rad. I just don't have time to like have another hobby or interest like that. Apart from vaping, my hobbies are small. I like sci-fi, I like comic books, and I like vaping, and I like music, and that's about all my brain can handle. I don't have room for a lot of football players' names, and I don't have room to like learn about cars. What I drive right now is a Toyota. It's a, it's a Scion. It's a Scion TC. It's a 2016 Scion TC. 
It's a car that I've kind of always just really wanted. Um, I had two friends back in Nevada that both drove Scion TCs and I just really liked them. I thought they were really cool. And so when it came time to trade in my fucking 14 year old, no, it wasn't even 14 years old. It was probably 11 years old, my 11 year old Scion XA, which was amazing. I had zero issues with it because it's a Toyota, because it's a Toyota engine and parts in there. And I really like Toyotas. I knew that I wanted to get a Scion TC. I went and got a Scion TC. It's not amazing. It's not a super cool car. It's just a car that I really like and I like driving it around and it's fun and fast and it looks kind of cool, but it's nothing special or over the top or anything like that. My dream car growing up was always a Mustang. I wanted like a, like a 69 or a 68 or a 69 Mustang, the Shelby, the Fastback with the racing stripes down the middle. That used to be my dream car and I've always wanted one. I think I think my dream car now, the car that I'm after, like my white whale, like when I become much more successful than I am right now, when I have enough money to buy like a fancy car, which is, you know, that's, I don't feel like I'm an adult yet. You, you know, you, you work your whole life to have like that goal, like that dream, you know, it's like someday I'm I want to own a Porsche, you know, or someday I want to own a Ferrari. Someday I would like to own a Tesla. I just want one. I want an electric car. And it's not because I've become like so environmentally conscious that I want an electric car, but I am a little bit environmentally conscious and I would like to have an electric car. I feel guilty driving around every day, just burning fossil fuels and polluting the air. And I would love to have a Tesla and I think Teslas are cool. And I really, really admire the fuck out of Elon Musk. I think he's a genius. I think that Elon Musk and Tesla are going to save the world. I just really admire the guy and I really like the Teslas. I think they're super cool. I'm a member of the, I subscribe to the Tesla subreddit on Reddit. I don't own one, but I like seeing the pictures and I like reading about people's experiences with the Teslas. And, and I just really want a Tesla. To keep this from going any longer, I'll make this short, but I never really had a bad car experience. Um, for a long time, I drove a 1969 baby blue Volkswagen bus that I absolutely loved, but it would constantly constantly die, break down, belts need to be replaced, the clutch needed to be replaced, the transmission needed to be replaced. Uh, I needed to use the timing gun on it almost every time I drew, almost every time I drove it or it would just backfire like crazy, you know, like my timing was always a little bit off on it. I drove it around in the winter time with no heat on the inside, non-working windshield wipers, but I loved it. It was a it was a bucket of shit. It was a terrible car. But it was my first car that I purchased with my own money. I spent five hundred dollars and bought a 1969 baby blue Volkswagen bus and drove it consistently for the next well, shit, four years after that? Honestly, I would like to have a restored Volkswagen bus now. Again, that's not now, that's that's later. That's that's later when I have like adult money. I've never owned more than one car. Sometimes I've owned no cars, but that doesn't count. I've never owned more than one car as I feel like that's, I don't know, that's that's too much, man. I, what am I doing with two cars? I don't need two cars. But I think someday when I'm successful and I've saved enough money, I would like to have a Tesla and I would like to have a restored Volkswagen bus in my garage as my cars. Life goals right there. Anyway, Scott from Wisconsin, thank you so much for writing in. If anybody else out there has any getting to know Grim Green questions that they would like to see answered on this here vlog program, send them on over nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark it getting to know Grim Green and it will get read and filed and screen captured and used accordingly in the vlog. Additionally, if you want to send it over in video format, I always love getting videos from my subscribers. So if you have a question you want to ask me on video, just send the video over, nick at grimgreen.com, and it will get watched and used accordingly on this show. Anyway, thank you so much, uh, Scott and Jake, and no, his name wasn't Jake. Oh, I'm bad with names. Did I mention that? James. It was James and Alex and Scott. Thank you so much for the getting to know Grim Green questions, and while we're on this train of answering questions, let's just parlay this right into viewer mails. Okay, I'm sorry. This is the last time I'm going to be butting into my own vlog. We're right here in the vlog at an hour and 30 minutes, okay? That's ridiculous.
I'm sorry, that's that's too long. Things just really got out of hand this week. We still have juice to do, and we still have favorite comments of the week to do, and I know both of those segments ran long. So what I'm gonna do this week is we're not gonna do viewer mail. I apologize, we're just gonna cut out viewer mail completely. I'm gonna save all of the edited video that I have, and we're gonna put it in next week's vlog for the viewer mail segment. But this week, there's just not time or space. So instead of doing viewer mail right now, we're gonna jump right into juice. Okay, this is the last time you'll see intrusive Nick. Back to the vlog. So what we opened in the vape mail segment, that's right, hooch, hooch, pure banana. Just think about that for a second. Imagine that in your mouth, just, Pure banana. God, that's a flavor that I am after. And I don't have my reload RTA for juice tasting, or RTA, RDA for juice tasting, because it's still loaded up with that strawberry monkey cream from last week. Yeah, it's still really delicious. So what we're gonna be tasting this juice out of today is that 1VP RDA from Dovpo. This is an RDA that's kind of been banging around my office for a while now, for a few months. And I haven't done a review for it because it's one of those things like it came out months ago. I mean, I was using this in July, I think, but it's just such a cool little 22 millimeter flavor. F millimeter? Yeah, I said millimeter. 22 millimeter flavor. Flavor RDA, I just keep using it. I keep coming back to it, and I like the way it looks on top of this Roxasa Mods, which has also been banging around my office for a few months now. It's just one of those setups that I like to keep on hand just to vape from occasionally. Anyway, hooch. Hooch Pure Banana. This is from Gold Leaf Drip, and the first thing I noticed is this is a cloudy juice. It is not just a see-through like a lot of other juices. It's not completely transparent like a lot of other juices. It's a very, like, a cloudy type of juice. Oh, it smells like banana land. Just New Bananasburg. East Banana Village. Give it a little bit of a knuckle test here. Let's see how that goes. Yeah, holy fuck. That's banana. That is the most banana that's ever bananaed. And I have been dying. How did Eric know? I've been dying for a just banana. Just pure, pure banana. Anyway, I'm hoping that's what I got here. Let's see how it goes. Boop, 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 boop. Anyway, this is a 0.43 dual fuse Clapton. I've got at 38 watts on the DNA 75. Might actually try to turn that up a little bit. Let's try this at 45 watts. Anyway, I'm expecting greatness. My hopes are really high for this, and I know that's something I never do, but my hopes are really high for this hooch pure banana. So hooch pure banana. Yeah, pure, pure banana. We're gonna do what we always do. I'm gonna sit back for a second. I'm gonna take a few toots on this and then we'll come back and talk about it. It lives up to the name Hooch Pure Banana is pure, pure banana. There is nothing else going on in this juice. And I get the vibe that this isn't just like a single banana component to this. I feel like there are multiple, multiple different complex layers of banana in this. There's a lot of sweetness involved, but no sweetener per se. It's like a sweet banana, it's like a sweet banana and a ripe banana and just bananas on top of other bananas. There's a lot going on in this juice for how simple it is. It tastes very complex, like I said, layers of banana. It's just banana on top of banana. It does not taste like runts or banana bread or any sort of like candied banana flavor. It's a very sweet but very natural, natural banana flavor. I am uh, overly impressed with this Hooch Pure Banana Gold Leaf Drip 60 ml bottle. 
I'd be interested to see how much this costs. Oh, well, that's not actually terrible. It's a it's a twenty three dollar sixty mil. So yeah, not that's not bad. That's actually not terrible. That's not like bargain juice, but it's not like five pawns either. And I'm not saying five pawns is like you know oh the most ridiculously expensive juice on the planet, but it's always traditionally been you know one of those like a uh, truly premium type of lines that are a little bit more expensive. This definitely definitely feels a little bit more crafty than like a than like a big jug of juice. And at twenty three dollars for a sixty mil, it's not gonna it's not something that's going to end up being my all day vape. But with that said, it's scratching me right where I itch. It's bananas. It's pure bananas and it's bananas on top of bananas. Just bananas everywhere. Big. I really dig it. I really dig this juice. Damn it. Now I have to have another setup going. Anyway, uh, that's the very random juice tasting. Let's finish this vlog. We're coming to the end. Let's do comments of the week. So last week we were talking about the uh, Avail Vapor situation with Altria buying a minority investment into Avail Vapor. And I posed the question to you guys, you know, what do you guys think about this? And here's what you had to say. Uh, Michael left a comment and said, while I remain uneasy about big tobacco, the fact is that they invested into a vapor company means they understand that we are winning this fight. By allowing a tobacco company to buy into your company, you're acknowledging the fact that they came to you for help. They still maintain control over their vapor company. Even if it's only to make money, they still don't have control. This also means that the vapor company will make more money in the end to grow their own industry. It's only odd because it hasn't happened on such a big scale. And yeah, I, I would mostly agree with that. As long as, I mean, Avail Vapor is still maintaining control of their own company, Altria is basically just getting the profits and helping Avail grow their business bigger. Uh, thankfully, one of my subscribers is an accountant, a CPA, and uh, Chuck had to say, I'm a certified public accountant, CPA. And yes, you have a good understanding of what a minority interest is. The last part about balance sheet and all of that doesn't really affect anything except for how the investment is presented on the company's financial statements, which unless you're an investor in the company or an accountant, doesn't matter. As for my thoughts on the matter, like you said, it makes sense from a business standpoint, but I'm not a fan of it. Mainly because like you, I'm not a fan of big tobacco and the hold they had on my life for 12 plus years. I will personally be avoiding juice sold and or produced by Avail because of this investment by Altria. A lot of people had said similar things. Things like, uh, well, I'm not going to support Avail anymore. I'm not going to buy anything from Avail anymore because of this big tobacco thing. And then Chris, well, Chris said, it's kind of messed up all this hate on Avail. I sit and hang with my boys who work there and you wouldn't believe the amount of people they switch to vaping from smoking per day. And they know their shit. Shake my head. Y'all need to chill on this hate reason for vaping industry is going to shit. And I know what he was trying to say there, but it, it, there's not a lot of punctuation in this, but he basically said, shake my head. You all need to chill on this hate, comma, the reason this vape industry is going into shit. I don't necessarily agree with you, Chris, but thank you, thank you for leaving your, your thoughts in the comments. I actually had a lot of former Avail employees leave comments as well. Uh, Arctic Dream left a comment and said, Chris Wilson, as a former ASM for Avail, I will tell you, they don't give a fuck about the people. The individual workers might, but we are told to basically push people towards the unnecessary, expensive, more complicated mods, even if they were starting. I even got in trouble for selling too many Tesla Stealth to the point where they threatened to stop sending us more packages of them, even though it was the most simplistic beginner mod for someone to move away from mouth to lung vaping. They just wanted us to push numbers, even if it meant leading customers away from the mods that they actually want. They also had us kick out anyone that started to cloud out the shop, which as a vape shop, that's ridiculous. They wouldn't let us vape anything that wasn't sold in a veil and so on and so on and so on. It's as cold and corporate as vape shops can get. I have not, never been to an Avail store. I, 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 I don't know if his story is true, but he's a former assistant manager at Avail Vapor. So, I mean, I'm inclined to believe him unless he's like some horribly disgruntled person, which I don't feel like that's the case. I feel like he was being genuinely honest there because those similar types of stories from different people also came in. Josh was a former Avail manager as well. And he said, former Avail Vapor manager, 
manager here, I can confirm that what the guy who wrote to you said is 110% true. They're a stain on the vape industry and only care about sales, even if a beginner is walking out of the store with a four battery mod. Not to mention the higher ups know absolutely nothing about vaping. Fuck a veil. And those are two examples of a lot of former employees of a veil giving their two cents and all of their stories are very, very similar. And then finally, Dick Roller left to come, and yeah, his name is uh, Dick Roller. His, I don't think his real name is Dick Roller, but on YouTube, he is Dick Roller. He is Dick Roller. I feel Altria buying into a veil is the same as AB InBev buying into the craft beer industry. Basically, if you can't beat them, buy them up and expand their distribution so you can make even more money. Personally, I distrust big tobacco, the same as I distrust big beer, but only time will tell what their plan really is. There is an avail across the street from where I live. I've stopped in twice, had less than desirable experiences both time, so my avail boycott will. Not 100% sure what so my avail boycott will means, but yes, absolutely dick roller. Thank you for chiming in. That's kind of exactly how I was thinking about it as well. One of our local San Diego breweries, Ballast Point, just sold to Big Beer for a lot of money into the b billions of dollars for money and all big beer wanted was the name and the distribution they can take these beers that are very popular in san diego and distribute them throughout the united states and make even more money so from a business standpoint altria buying into a veil vapor makes a lot of sense and on the other side of the coin i don't trust big tobacco i don't like seeing things like this happen and apparently according to the customers and the former employees avail vapor might not be the most upstanding uh, you know vape shop in the world and you know according to one of their former employees they are described as cold and corporate as cold and corporate as vape shops can get and that also really bums me out but anyway yes thank you everybody for writing down your comments about the avail vapor altria situation and ultimately where I land on it, it's a lot like Mr. Dick Roller. If you can't beat them, buy them up and make more money. From a business standpoint, it does make a lot of sense, but that doesn't mean that I have to like it because I don't. I don't trust big tobacco and I don't like it. <laughs> but anyway, I do have a couple more uh, comments of the week here. I want to give a big shout out to Nico from Finland for always helping me screen capture comments of the week. It's almost like you work at Grim Green industries except I'm not paying you and you're in Finland but Nico I really very much appreciate the help thank you I got your mom's beaver here no that's the guy's name your mom's beaver left a comment and said I often wonder what the back of your ear smells like I, I, I have no way to answer that I'm assuming a lot like the front <laughs> yeah and there were a lot of Fred Durst jokes uh, Jay beer seer left a comment and said grim green and the hot dog flavored water and then we got a brilliant comment Comment from a fella named Shadow Skull who just said, Fuck you, stupid cunt. All right, uh, I think he went meant to be watching a Bogan video and not a Grim Green video. There's a good chance that you were just on the wrong video, sir. <laughs> This one's hilarious, and dude, I don't honestly know if I should be taking this as a compliment or not, but Daniel left a comment and said, I'm one of the guys that always makes it to the end of the vlog. The reason being, you fuck up so much, it makes my day. I still can't believe you've been doing YouTube for years because you fuck up as much as a preteen learning to jack off. Stay classy. San Diego. I'm taking that as a compliment, Daniel. I'm taking that as a compliment. And yes, I will stay classy. And even if you are a troll, Daniel, which I don't believe you are a troll, but even if you are a troll, I'm still taking that as a compliment. You know, I, I try my best sometimes, but look, we look, we're all human, right? We're all human. And we all fuck things up sometimes. Hand kiss 20 left a comment and said, The way I can tell you don't have kids, you call them a human child instead of just kids. LOL. <laughs> yeah, um, I do. I, I, I do. I, I call them human childs. I call babies tiny humans. And when they're children, I call them human child instead of just kids. And then my last comment of the week comes from a fella named Craig who says, Hot chocolate is for pussies who don't like coffee. Yeah. 
Absolutely. No, I don't know. Who cares? Just let people enjoy things. Pussies who don't like coffee. I know a lot of people that don't like coffee that uh, might pound you into the ground for calling them a pussy. Hashtag omboy OC. <laughs> Anyway, you guys, that's it. We're done. We're done with the vlog. All right. Thank you so much for joining me, you guys. Let me just take a quick look uh, around the office and make sure I didn't forget anything. No, I think we're good. I think we're all good here in Vlogland. Anyway, yeah, that's what I got. I'm going to grab this tin. I'm going to grab my Iconic, and I'm going to vape some Fall Delight tobacco flavor out of it while I sit and edit video. And don't forget, you can follow me all over social media on Twitter and Instagram, at Grim Green. And if I'm being real, real honest, I've become a little bit bored of Instagram lately. Like, Instagram was my jam for a real long time, but I'm kind of growing bored of Instagram, and I've really been enjoying Twitter. I never really thought I would go back to Twitter, but I've really been enjoying Twitter. Twitter makes it really easy to talk and interact with people on a much better scale than Instagram is doing. And that's why I'm going to Twitter more than I am to Instagram, because it actually lets me interact with people a lot easier easier than Instagram does. Anyway, that's what I got, everybody. Thank you so, so much for watching. Don't forget, every Monday and Tuesday I do reviews. If not then, then I'll see you back here Thursday for next week's vlog. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, yeah, even though I fuck things up, like if I just bumped into my microphone. I kind of wish I hadn't done that now. Even though you fuck things up, always, always, let's keep on vaping. Motherfucker. God. Ah, oh, God, I stubbed my toe on my chair.